Hi guys, today is a really, really exciting video for me because it's a collaboration with one of my favorite mamas from across the pond. We met on Instagram and we just struck up a relationship and she is awesome. She's called Jana and her channel is called Fox Meets Bear and she's adorable. She has three of the sweetest little girls. They live in Minnesota in the middle of the woods in this beautiful A-frame house and yeah, you've got to go follow her. Today's video is going to be about positive parenting. I'm going to be giving you 10 tips here on my channel and then John is going to be giving you 10 more tips over on her channel. So definitely go and check those out. So yeah, really exciting. So my first tip for positive parenting sounds really simple but actually for me is super important and that is all about the environment. So what I mean by that is I think it's super important to have a really calm, kind of safe, chilled environment. So for example, the first thing we'll do when we come down in the morning is put on some nice chilled music, usually something a little bit acoustic-y, then I will light a candle, switch the fairy lights on, and make sure things are kind of tidy at least to begin with the day. And then just, yeah, try and keep things just calm. So like no TV, no radio, not too much like noise. I know that sounds weird, especially because I just talked about music. I just think that this helps the kids feel calm and therefore helps them to play better. So yeah, for me, environment is super important. That also extends to the toys that they play with. So I like to keep the toys that they have quite simple as well. So we have loads of wooden toys. The boys have a wooden train set and they just play with it for hours. I just way prefer to have these kind of simple toys rather than these kind of flashing plastic toys that make loads of noise and ring. And We have like a few of them, but I really prefer not to have them because I just think that they create a bit more chaos, which is what I try to avoid. And that's what I mean by having like a calm environment. Okay. The second tip I have in terms of positive parenting is about your day and how you kind of structure it. We try to completely under schedule our times. Less is more. I might have like one thing every two days planned for us and the kids whether it's to see a friend or to go somewhere and the rest I just like to completely go with the flow and see what we feel like in that moment. Um, that might mean staying at home, that might mean popping to the park or to the shops. I just like to do things our way and to follow the flow of the boys and not have pressure on us to be somewhere at a certain time. Obviously that does happen sometimes and it's also nice to go out and meet up with friends and stuff but on the whole I like to just have empty what I call zero plan days. I think that helps to foster just a calm, nice, positive environment too. There is nothing worse than rushing kids to get somewhere. Rushing them to get dressed, rushing them to get out of the house. I really don't like it and it turns me into someone stressed. So for me, a really easy way to just avoid any of that is just to not have any plans. And then I don't even think about getting stressed because it doesn't matter if it takes us an hour to get dressed, an hour to leave the house, an hour to meander somewhere because we've got no pressure on us to be anywhere. The third tip I have for positive parenting is to Foster a spirit of independence in your kids. What I mean by that is really giving them space and time to just be on their own, independent, whether that's playing on their own, whether that's trying to get dressed on their own, whether that's even letting them kind of cook a bit on their own. Like just giving them that sense of independence I think is a really, really positive thing. I think kids being able to play on their own and be independent is so important. It lets them work things out for themselves. It lets them grow. If the kids are having a little tussle, then I try and stay back. And more often than not, they just solve it themselves. I want them to be able to play on their own, to work things out. I feel like that space is where they learn the most. When they're trying to see how like the train fits in the garage, I think that's like magic time for them and I wanna let them be independent to work that out for themselves. Apart from anything else, it lets me get on and do other things that I might wanna do. But the fourth tip I wanna give for positive parenting is along the lines of the stuff that you do do together and when I do do activities with the kids, I try and make them, I hate this word, but really kind of mindful or like relaxing. So um, we practice yoga together, we do loads of cooking, we just do like calm activities together. We even tried a bit of meditation the other day. We do a bit of reading, although that's not my favorite thing to do with them. We definitely do a lot of yoga though and whether the kids are like crawling on me or beside me or trying to do a downward dog themselves, I don't think it matters. It's just a really nice activity to do together. Ditto cooking. It's so lovely to be able to see Jack get involved with it and try the things that he then ends up making. Or gardening, I love doing a bit of gardening with the kids. 
The next tip I've got for practicing positive parenting is along the same lines as the point I made before about independence, but this is going a bit further. This is more about trust and responsibility. So I try and give Jack quite a lot of trust, whether that's letting him use some scissors to cut up something, or use a knife to cut his sandwich, or help me cooking, like I said, or be a couple of steps ahead of me near a road. I give him that space and I trust him. Of course, it's a fine line and you've got to work out for you as a parent where those trust barriers are. But I feel like giving your kids trust is a really, really positive thing. Also giving them a sense of responsibility. So now with Jack, I give him quite a lot of responsibility when it comes to Sunny. Like he'll be in charge of getting Sunny to sleep for his nap during the day and I leave them to it and I let Jack read Sunny to sleep. And it just works really nicely and it makes Jack feel really good too. The sixth tip I've got for positive parenting is all about communication. So Jack and Sunny and I, well mainly Jack and I, talk about everything. We talk, 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 talk. I've written a blog post actually about this, where if Jack ever does act up and stuff, we always talk about it. We talk about it during our walk, we talk about it before bed, we talk about it in the bath, and I just feel like communication and talking with your kid is so important. Like getting down on their level and talking to them eye to eye, working out what it is that may be wrong is so important. Like we always say to adults, talk it out. But we don't always say that when it comes to kids, when they can talk, I mean. And I think it's so underestimated how much kids can understand and also tap into their feelings. I've got a couple of really cool books on emotion. I'm gonna link to them below because I think they're really helpful as well when it comes to communicating and talking with your little one. The seventh tip I've got around positive parenting is about rules. We don't have that many things that the kids can't do. Like if Jack wants to stand on the table, he can stand on the table. I might say to him, hey, you might fall off and hurt your head. More often than not, he'll get off the table because he realizes that standing on the table is a bit silly. We just don't have that many rules, so there aren't that many things that the kids feel that they're not allowed to do. And ironically, I think that that makes them do less naughty things because there aren't these boundaries that they're seeking to cross. And equally, like, just to be quite relaxed when you can. Yeah, like, if Jack doesn't want to wear shoes when we're walking to the car, which is like 100 meters away, then he doesn't have to wear shoes. Like, be relaxed when the moment affords it. And the other thing about not having too many rules is that when there are rules, I feel like our kids listen to them because there aren't that many, so that they know when there is a rule, it's important and they need to listen to it. Jack knows he cannot go too near to the edge of the pavement because he knows that it's dangerous, because that is one of the few rules that I have. The next piece of advice is kind of linked, and that is stick to your word. So if you say something, stick to it. If I tell Jack that he's not gonna be able to watch his little window of TV that day because he's acting up for whatever reason, and then we get home and he wants to, no. Like, I stick to my word. What I say stands. And so he knows, I think, that like I'm in charge because I don't say one thing and do another. I do use this in conjunction with bribery, which I'm totally comfortable with. Um, but yeah, when I say something, I mean it, and I don't change my mind, and I think that he knows that. But yeah, stick to your words. The next tip kind of follows on from the communication point, but it's specifically around language. So I try and use really kind of positive, calm language around the kids that isn't panicky as well. So instead of saying, be careful, there's a car, I'll try and say, Jack, have you noticed that there's a car coming? Watch out. Or like say, do you see that car, how quickly it went afterwards, after the moment when he's there holding my hand. Equally, for example, if he's trying to fix something or solve something, instead of telling him how to do it, I will ask him to show me and say, can you see what might go there? Or, where do you think it goes? I think that language and how you use it is so important and you should try not to make it too direct or too panicky or too anxiety inducing in the kid and more questioning and open and probing and around curiosity and imagination and not so much around rules and rigidness. My tenth and final point for positive parenting is really simple and that is Enjoy your kids. Enjoy being together, have fun, dance around the kitchen, play dress up, do silly aeroplane moves. Whatever it is you wanna do, just do it and be silly. I promise you that will get you out of any funk that you might have been in. Like me, when I'm feeling a little bit grumpy or tired, then I'll put on a really banging loud song and just dance around the kitchen with the kids. It just dissolves any feeling of like grumpiness that I had. 
So those are my 10 tips for positive parenting. I really hope you enjoyed them. Don't forget to go over to Jana's channel for another 10 tips. Otherwise, I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below with your tips. Don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, guys. Bye.